Both Caesar and Ariovistus understood the importance of Vesanito, a town in modern-day France, and rushed to set up a defensive position. The Romans got there first and rested. However, upon hearing of the size of the Swaby force, the Romans began to panic. Many of the officers held their posts for political reasons, and had no real war experience, and Caesar was at risk of mutiny. Caesar remained in control by stating that he would face Ariovistus with only his 10th legion, if no one else would follow. This shamed the other officers into following Caesar, and they marched onwards. Ariovistus set up for another meeting with Caesar, and they rode out with only cavalry. But this meeting went poorly. There was even a slight scuffle between the cavalry before both generals returned. Ariovistus sent out for another meeting a couple of days later. Since in a trap, Caesar instead sent out his translators, who were then captured. The Swaby then sunk behind the Romans, cutting them off from their supply lines and holding upon a hill. They then started setting up battle formations. There were 15,000 Swaby and 25 to 30,000 Romans. Ariovistus didn't fight head on. Instead, the start of the battle consisted of mostly cavalry skirmishes, while Ariovistus held the hill, cutting the Romans off from their supplies. The Swaby cavalry were unique in respect that lightly armoured infantry accompanied those on horseback, running as fast as they could. An odd tactic, but it seems to have worked as the Roman cavalry came off worse. The Romans therefore formed into three lines. The two front lines would march just out of range of the Swaby force, while the back set up a new camp on an opposite side of the hill, reconnecting the Roman supply lines. The Swaby marched their cavalry and light infantry to harass the Romans, but failed to hold them off. Now that this new camp was set up and their supply lines reconnected, Caesar and his main force marched up to the main camp. Ariovistus took advantage of this and attacked the new camp. However, the Romans held the Swaby off once more. Caesar was then informed by some hostages that the reason Ariovistus was not committing his whole force is that he was told not to until the new moon by his priests. Hence why the Romans were able to even set up their new camp. Learning of this, Caesar then decided to go on the offensive, leaving only small garrisons in the camps. The six Roman legions formed into a triplex axis formation, with his cavalry at the rear. Caesar noticed that the right of the Swaby force was stronger, so stationed himself on the left. Upon Caesar ordering a charge, so did the Swaby force, who took the Romans by surprise, and they even had to drop their javelins without throwing them, allowing for the Germans to set up a shield wall. The Germans met them head on, with their women and children in wagons behind them, egging the men on as cheerleaders. This would have been great for morale, but make the consequences of losing dire. These men were quite literally fighting for not only their own lives, but the lives of their women and children who were close by. Caesar had managed to outmaneuver the Germans on their left, but the Germans had managed to push the Romans back on the right. Therefore Caesar ordered his cavalry to back up the right flank, fixing this weakness. Caesar's left flank now managed to push the Swaby, whose forces broke and ran. It's unknown how many died, but as the Germans could not easily squeeze through the space of their wagons, it is said that it was so packed tightly that the dead couldn't even fall. Those Germans who were lucky enough to squeeze through this space fled back across the Rhine. Be sure to check out my other channel, History Sticks, for the complete, longer and comprehensive video.